Good morning. Um, so uh, first, I'd like to, um, to, to mention our support for this um, uh, from the Marshfield Clinic Research Foundation uh, grant from um, uh, Delta Dental of Wisconsin, the CTSA um, from uh, University of Wisconsin and Marshfield Clinic called ICTER, and uh, NHGRI, especially uh, Ian Marpuri, who uh, help, uh, helped us organize um, a, a budding consortium to study um, the oral microbiome and its relationship to, um, to systemic health. So the, um, the, the, uh, 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 our goal is to establish uh, an oral um, systemic health cohort that, uh, uh, that across multiple um, institutions. And in, in doing so, we wanted to standardize enrollment of patients with electronic health records, electronic dental records, um, and a set of standard um, clinical tests, uh, standard uh, uh, microbiome um, characterization, uh, and also have genomic DNA, plasma, and serum. And this is to advance translational medicine and, and dental care as well. So uh, among the, uh, the participants in, in, in this group, uh, they're, they're listed here. And, and, and um, many of these uh, um, contributed to um, uh, the standards that we have for uh, enrolling this, these cohorts. So uh, spoiler, spoiler alert here, um, that uh, the mouth is part of the body and uh, the microbiome needs to be factored uh, in for risk assessment of some of the most common and costly diseases. Um, and therefore, uh, the microbiome has to be part of personalized medicine. And, and in order to facilitate this, um, uh, to, we would like to gather uh, a set of patients uh, with standardized recruitment and sample collection, et cetera, to, to advance this field. So um, where we are at this, uh, this point is we've been talking about genetics, not so much about the environment, trying to understand better uh, complex diseases here. But uh, one of the large environmental factors has, is the microbiome, and in particular, the oral microbiome. Um, and that is, is also influenced by our diet and, and, uh, and other environmental factors. But the genetics and, and the environment then, of course, contribute to complex diseases, and in particular to type 2 diabetes, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and coronary artery disease. So uh, better understanding of this relationship um, will lead to uh, enhanced predict predictive medicine um, and also can address uh, health disparities. Because if we think that uh, medical care, um, there are disparities in medical care, there are even more significant disparities in, in dental care. So uh, the NIH, of course, has been uh, fundamental in, in promoting uh, research in the, um, in the human microbiome uh, at, at various sites. And uh, there are also a number of, of research opportunities and RFAs out on, on microbiome. Um, if we consider the oral microbiome, um, and look at, at um, you know, sort of a healthy tooth here and uh, periodontitis on, over here, um, there are very large differences in the bacteria um, that uh, are in the periodontal space uh, in these two situations. Um, in, in this case, uh, the deeper pockets, you have anaerobic bacteria um, and you have different species, uh, some of which uh, have been shown to contribute to systemic disease. And there's been many advances in understanding the, uh, the species range of the oral microbiome uh, and other omics uh, that have to do with the microbiome. So uh, in, in this, uh, in our uh, cohort here, or in our um, uh, group of, of interested um, uh, institutions, uh, we've had some progress. We've had a series of conference calls to plan this initiative. Um, uh, we've, we're organizing then this uh, oral systemic health consortium with these standardized uh, recruitment criteria. 
Uh, we've completed a, a phase one a pilot project at Marshfield, uh, and we've standardized all of these things here. In the pilot project, we've enrolled 41 patients so far. We've published a manuscript outlining the, the project. We have planned enrollment of an additional 2,000 uh, subjects at the Marshfield Clinic. And um, Inga Peter at Mount Sinai uh, is about to enroll the first of 400 subjects. And again, all coordinated uh, to, to be standardized in that so that we can combine any data that comes out of this. And those, that includes long-term uh, electronic medical records, electronic dental uh, records, host DNA, uh, oral microbiome DNA, and, and other, um, other omics uh, from the oral microbiome, plasma and serum samples, and a series of standardized clinical tests uh, at enrollment. Um, we've, we, uh, together with uh, uh, all of our colleagues, we've come up with uh, inclusion, exclusion criteria, case definitions, uh, and all of these other details shown here. And this is uh, the review that we've published. And uh, at, at, the, at the Marshfield Clinic, although our, um, our, our, uh, the clinic it, it has for 90 years been focused on, on uh, me the medical health of the population of Wisconsin, we noticed that there, was, there were large numbers of our patients that were not receiving dental care. So over the past few years, um, we've opened up a series of dental clinics uh, for this underserved population. And uh, we have a total of eight uh, right now, uh, with a ninth clinic at, at Black River Falls on the Ho-Chunk Indian Reservation. And this is the population that we serve. <clears throat> um, of the 41 uh, individuals in the pilot project, uh, we measured things like uh, cholesterol, fasting blood glucose, microalbumin, um, uh, blood pressure, um, uh, HSCRP, uh, hemoglobin A1C, uh, et cetera. And of the 41 uh, individuals, um, 35 of them had, had an aberrant uh, value for one of these tests. And in fact, um, uh, some, uh, at least one individual had five aberrant values here. So if we look at the age and type 2 diabetes distribution just of these pilot subjects, these are individuals who have already been uh, diagnosed with uh, type 2 diabetes. But if we look at fasting glucose in type 2 diabetes uh, in this population, we see the, in, in orange here are the uh, diabetics, uh, some of which are, are controlled and some of which are not controlled very well. But we see there are uh, significant numbers of these individuals um, that have a higher than normal level of fasting glucose. Um, if we look at hemoglobin A1C distribution, we also see some uh, individuals here who are on their way to type 2 diabetes. Um, and uh, we also have a large number of these folks that, uh, that, are, that have higher than normal of the high sensitivity, sensitivity uh, C-reactive protein indicating that there's some in, inflammatory process going on. So um, I think that, that what this shows us is that, um, uh, and, and this is actually a population that um, is, it, it relatively, receives relatively good uh, medical care at this time. Uh, and these individuals were recruited from the dental clinic at Marshfield and at Chippewa Falls. But uh, in some of the more remote clinics, uh, uh, in particular um, at Black River Falls, there are some individuals who uh, have never seen a dentist in their whole life. So we think that this will, will greatly, by providing dental care, it will greatly improve the lives of these individuals. But also it provides a, a great opportunity for research in terms of uh, better understanding how it, controlling the microbiome uh, in these individuals could, could lead to better health. And in addition, um, again, these very expensive um, and uh, uh, complex uh, human disorders for which we, we have 
some genetic predictors, I think we should be able to enhance that predictability by uh, uh, understanding better the microbiome. So I just wanted to acknowledge the whole team at Marshfield and also uh, the, my uh, collaborators uh, in this burgeoning network. So thank you, I'll, I'll stop here. Thank you, Murray. Uh, any questions for uh, Murray about the uh, uh, project? Again, perfectly clear. Um, and I'm sure that uh, if uh, uh, any of you are uh, uh, interested in exploring uh, uh, in more detail, uh, you can contact Murray. And I'm, I'm sure that, uh, as with uh, all of the work groups here, um, we're always uh, interested in attracting other people that might be um, uh, interested in, in participating. Uh, so, but we uh, are gratified to see that uh, uh, two of our uh, uh, members are, have actually. Uh, uh, gotten to the point of enrolling patients in a specific project and have a paper, and I think that's a great outcome. So thank you, Murray. Next, we'll have uh, Kara Sang uh, present uh, an update on the cancer working group.